For the word of God is quick and powerful, and is sharper than two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thought and intent of our heart. Listen to this message and remain blessed. Tonight we are considering for a topic Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. This is not your rest. It says, Arise ye and depart. Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, For this is not your rest, because it is polluted and it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. I read it one more time. It says, Arise ye and depart from that place, that level, that face, that location, that realm. It says, For this is not your rest. There is a rest, but this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. This is not your rest. I'm challenging the arrival mentality. I'm challenging complacency. The cancer that has destroyed the great and stopped people from reaching completion. This teaching tonight is a press for completion. It is the kind of teaching that will insist upon your destiny that you move beyond progress to completion. Tonight's teaching imparts upon you the grace to finish, not just to go forward. This challenges you beyond an appetite for advancement and insists that you must finish. And for everyone under the sound of my voice, I speak over your life that what God has begun with you, in you, through you, may he finish it in Jesus' name. You will never be an aborted destiny. Amen. I'm only speaking to someone who is open to receive. You will never be an aborted destiny. Amen. And I pray for someone, may your life never be a negative lesson for others. Amen. That when others are being warned about how not to fail or how to fail, may your life not be the reference. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Joshua chapter 13 and verse 1. Very profound and simple scripture. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said to him, Thou art old and you are stricken in years. And there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. You are old. You are stricken in age. You have sojourned for a very long time. You've made commendable progress. But it says there remained yet very much land to be possessed let me start my teaching tonight by doing a recap in one of the series navigating prophetic seasons i began that series by challenging us on a scripture isaiah chapter 43 from verse 18 and 19 the bible says remember ye not the former things it says, neither consider the things of old. Verse 19 says, behold, I do a new thing and it shall spring forth. And shall ye not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And I just want to draw out a few things that I communicated in that series. Number one, how that overdwelling on the past. You see, remember? That overdwelling on the past, both negative and positive, has a consequence on your destiny it has a consequence on your tomorrow the bible says remember ye not the former things provided it is former provided it is the past the bible gives you a caution that overdwelling on the past whether negative past or positive past has a negative effect overall on your destiny and i did teach us at the time that a positive past creates complacency, creates pride, creates overconfidence, indiscipline. Are we together now? When people overdwell on their strides of yesterday, when people overdwell on their accomplishments of yesterday, yesterday can mean yesteryears, yesterday can mean, you know, decades ago. Our world is full of people who will always remind you of pleasant stories of yesterday. Strides in the area of business, ministerial strides, family strides. Are we together? 
academic, intellectual, educational strides. Our world is full of people who are passionate about reminding us of yesterday, not necessarily for the purpose of pushing us into tomorrow, but that that is the only story they have to tell. The Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, but then it also considers today and considers forever. Overdwelling on a negative past, even if positive, can hinder your passion to finish, your passion to press. I have taught you in this house that many people today are failures because they once succeeded. Their greatest unbecoming was that there was a history of success in their lives. Oftentimes you find this most evident in the field of sports where you can find an athlete who becomes a celebrity, a winner, a champion by every definition for a period of time and then they plunge into some kind of decadence, they deplete, deteriorate, erode and they become very, very sorry versions of themselves. Um, we have this in the world of, even in the academia, you have this in the world of technology. There are gadgets today that at the point they were discovered, invented, and manufactured, it looked like the world would never have anything better. An instance, typewriters. Today we have a generation that does not even know what a typewriter looks like. Are we together? We used to have all kinds of um, uh, gadgets for our viewing, better marks, VHS, and then see these fluffy discs now people don't even know what that means the bible says remember ye not the former things there are people whose only crown is in their yesterday are we learning now and so they are not able to move forward because they are so emotionally connected to the strides of yesterday they will tell you all kinds of stories i was once a commissioner i was a great man those days when we were anointed you will hear it as if god suddenly died from the throne those days when we used to raise people from the wheelchairs those days when we used to organize crusades those days when we were serious with god those days when i was a pastor those days when i used to pray those days when i used to fast not like now i don't do all those things again but those days our lives and stories are full of those days those days on campus i used to be on fire those days on campus and today you wonder where the fire had gone i'm praying for you whatever will have to make you to make reference to only yesterday i cast that spirit from your destiny are we together and then the bible also talks about the possibility of meditating on a negative past that also has a very adverse effect on your destiny what does it do number one it creates fear there are three levels of fear there's fear of yesterday there's fear of today and there's fear of tomorrow and either ways you will be met with a very very grave consequence if you embrace any of the fears there is the fear of yesterday usually it is the fear that comes with history i once tried and i failed you heard the testimony of the dear lady submitting visas in spite of seeing god manifest through my face in her dream the sister got the visa and then the gentleman didn't get the visa and he was angry he was you know and all of that you find those kinds of testimonies. Something happens when people fail. Is the reason why it's important to learn the laws of success early in life and the laws of the spirit early in life so that your success rate will be greatly minimized. Something happens to a human spirit if you have a track record of consistent failure. Are we together? Usually, your mind builds, your mind is educated from the lens of your failure there is a way you begin to look at life if and when you fail again and again and again there are certain possibilities your mind can no longer capture or easily capture for instance for an individual who would have failed all his life when you teach things like a grace called favor when you teach things like speed they will shout amen but the truth is there's no capacity to believe that kind of possibility it's never been captured in their lives Hallelujah. Negative past can bring fear. Two, negative past can bring discouragement. It can fight your passion to continue, fight your passion to press. There are people who you will try to challenge them and after wasting your time, wasting minutes and even hours of motivation, they will tell you, I'm really um, thankful for your heart and your commitment for me. But as for me, I've concluded. You find this most evident in the life of people who have suffered prolonged infirmities. 
if you've ever had anyone that you've had to manage their health for a very long time a time comes they stop saying amen to prayers and it's not just unbelief is what happens when your yesterday does not improve when your yesterday keeps traveling into your today and even into your tomorrow i'm praying for you may yesterday come to an end over your life i think it was in koinonia i preached one time that yesterday is a very very jealous phenomenon it always wants to relieve itself into your today yesterday is so jealous it will never allow your today and your tomorrow go in peace it is obsessed with relieving itself in your today and you have to create that door and that border to say yesterday thank god for the lessons learned but as this door is shut it will never open again maybe that's someone's prayer tonight you're saying there are certain events certain things that happen in your yesterday failure pain regret mistakes challenges that you never want to find expression in your today and tomorrow and i'm praying for you since you have desire to have a better today and a better tomorrow the power that closes the door of yesterday permanently may that power be released over your life in the name of Jesus Christ Philippians chapter 3 13 and 14 very profound scripture Philippians 3 13 14 Paul is speaking now brethren he says I count not myself to have apprehended are we learning now he says but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I like this. I taught you already. Let's try it one more time. First two words. Ready? One, two, go. I press. Again. One last time. It says, I press. I press towards the mark. Take note of that. We'll revisit that statement in the course of our discussion. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus so it says remember ye not the former things I have learned from scripture and from experience honestly not because I'm preaching it that if you cannot learn how to look forward and stay looking forward you will most likely not arrive nobody runs and runs to win by looking backwards are we together do you know that even as you drive, those who design the mechanics of driving there's not so much liberty to drive backwards indefinitely for instance, there's only one reverse gear. There's no reverse one, reverse two, reverse three, because they don't expect you to go down for too long. If you move back, it's only to reposition yourself to go forward. When you're driving forward, there's, as we know, manual driving gear, one, two, three, and whatever it is. Are we together? When you are going forward, they give you the liberty to accelerate and increase your speed. But when you are going backward, the manufacturers of the car, even though many of them were not directly filled with the Holy Ghost, they knew instinctively, which is consistent with Scripture, that nobody keeps going back indefinitely and you want a reverse gear too reverse gear three reverse gear five it's not necessary everything about the mechanics of the car rejects that approach but when you are going forward even self-driving cars don't reverse indefinitely backward because you are just supposed to turn at a bend and then you keep moving forward I don't care what has pegged your eyes to keep looking at yesterday. Hence, you came for this service tonight. I decree and declare the grace to turn your attention forward may it be released over your life. <laughs> Let me tell you one of the disasters of focusing on yesterday. It keeps justifying you're not going forward. Yesterday can give you sufficient reasons to not rise again. Yesterday can give you sufficient reasons to not press forward again. Are we together now? And you see, yesterday will always come with a sense of legitimacy and entitlement. It will justify why you are failing and why you keep failing. Justify why your life may not move forward. There are people today who will not take responsibility over their lives and their destiny courtesy the excuses of yesterday. A wise man once said the best time was yesterday he said the next best time is now there's nothing you can do about yesterday if it's good glory be to God if it's bad it's gone but now that you have the gift of life energy and your mind is still sane and coordinated you can begin to make profitable pro destiny decisions this is not your rest 
So the starting point of any destiny I wrote here is the desire to make progress. Usually, there is no, uh, now I know that there are all kinds of, you know, cars today, especially sport cars that are purported to jump from zero, you know, kilometer per hour to almost 150 in as little as four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, maybe less than that. But at least we know that it is not a jump from zero to 150. It must start from one, two, three, four, five, no matter how fast. So the starting point of any destiny is first a desire for progress. You're not going to be able to break that inertia if you do not have a desire to make progress and to advance in life and destiny. The starting point, if you want to become, you want to evolve spiritually uh, in, and in every ramification, you must have a desire to make progress. But something happens to men when you begin to make progress, especially commendable progress. The passion to press, the passion to continue, and the passion to finish seems to evaporate. And most people, even those who start well, even those who make commendable progress, never seem to be able to finish. Hallelujah. My assignment tonight as guided by the Spirit of God is to give us keys keys that provoke dissatisfaction that regardless what stride what progress you have made in the spirit that as i dish out these keys like serving you a spiritual meal it will cause a holy anger a holy provocation within your spirit and you will tell yourself this is not my rest as much as i have seen god move greatly this is not my rest this is not the greatest level of the anointing i can carry this is not the greatest level of revelation i can step into are we together this is not the greatest um credence i can give to my call and my ordination my election the Bible says to give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. It is your responsibility to partner with the spirit of grace to bring validation to the authenticity of your call. There are keys. As always, there are keys. Completion does not just happen. Ever increasing glory does not just happen. The Bible already gives you the basis of your press and confidence. But you must understand the keys that make what is written become your experience. I have taught you in this scripture in, in Koinonia that there, the Bible has two expressions there. Is what we call finished realities from God's standpoint. Prophetic realities. E.W. Kenyon will call it the legal side of redemption. And then there is their prophetic experiential manifestation the vital side when what is written now becomes a reality in your life your assignment is to master how to convert the truths that are written a compendium of God's promises God's desire God's expectation for you to engage by faith through knowledge are we together and turn whatever it is that is written to now become your experience your Christian experience for sure will be frustrated if you keep reading things in the Bible that never find expression in your life. Reading it in the Bible should provoke you so that you engage the keys. Are we together? That commit God to perform the things that are written so that they speak in experience in your life. And I'm praying for you. Everything you have written that has been written and you have desired to see manifest in your life as i hand you these keys tonight in the name of jesus christ may these keys become ladders may they truly take you to the place of completion in your life say amen, amen. i've not been in ministry for too long i'm not just starting by the message of god we've been around for a bit and i have seen people rise and fall I have seen great businesses. With all due respect, I've seen servants of the living God rise with fire and vibrancy, such momentum, such dexterity and passion. And you would think sometimes that people who arrive, they will complete their assignment in one year. But I've seen people literally evaporate like smoke before the wind. Are we together? And yet, I have seen others who started in a way that you wonder if they, even if they are given many lifetimes, they will not finish. But somewhere in their journey, the mercy of God met them. Their hunger and their passions were spared and some of them are still standing. They look like they will not stand, but they are still standing today. I learned very early in life and ministry 
that an arrival mentality is cancerous. By an arrival mentality, we do not mean just having a vision to arrive. We mean a mentality that brings you to a point of self-sufficiency and complacency. An arrival mentality can bring an unwanted inertia over your life. It's an extra luggage upon the vehicle of your destiny such that the speed, the momentum that you require to drive your destiny to completion, you lose that momentum because of an arrival mentality. I used to think when I started out in life and I started my work with God that only failure provokes people to, you know, uh, failure brings discouragement and stops people from finishing strong. But I learned later on that eventually both success and failure can be enemies of your destiny. It is only that one is a more visible enemy than the other. Success is a friend that later becomes an enemy. Success does not start as an enemy. It starts as a friend. But when you entertain its presence too much, it can distract you until it becomes an enemy. Are we together? Many have failed because they once succeeded. Failed in business. Failed in destiny. Many pastors have failed. are crawling through the doors of destiny, the gates, the corridors of destiny, barely trying to survive relevance and impact. And the simple reason is because we got to a point where we violated a major spiritual law. Paul educates us and here's what he says, that not that we are sufficient in ourselves to think anything of ourselves. He said our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers. Are we together? After the spirit, not after the letter, for the letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. So I want to hand you these keys and please I want you to lend me your attention in the name of Jesus Christ. Make sure you are alert, make sure you are not just looking but you are receiving. Are we together? You receive through your eye gate, you receive through your ear gate and other impulses that your spirit, the mechanisms built within your spirit to receive the word. But principally your eye gate and your ear gate. The Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear. That means not everybody has the kind of ear that translates to attentiveness. I come by the grace of the sower and seeds are about to be planted to over glorious destinies now. And some of you, I hope you will not be careless to fall asleep and allow Satan come and plant something else. And for others, I'm praying that your heart has been prepared so that it is not thorny ground, so that it is not, uh, you know, any kind of soil that is unconducive for the seed. I'm praying for you that on account of what you will hear tonight, may you produce harvests. Harvest of 30-fold, 60-fold. And if you are really connected to this ministry, may you never rest till you produce a hundredfold. In the name of Jesus. The first key according to scripture that provokes dissatisfaction and sponsors continuity even unto a point of completion regardless your current result when you hold on to this key it sustains the power to consistently provoke dissatisfaction and to drive your life to sponsor continuity until you finish strong number one is called vision vision the first factor according to scripture that provokes dissatisfaction and drives men, all kinds of men, to never stop, to never be satisfied until they finish, until they attain unto God's expectation is called vision. What is vision? A picture of your prophetic destiny. A picture of your prophetic destiny. What is vision? A picture of God's standard, God's expectation for you. I'm giving you a slightly different definition other than that which you would hear in a mainstream leadership discussion. In as much as this applies to leadership, my focus here is on destiny actualization, particularly your spiritual growth and advancement. Vision. A picture of your prophetic future. A picture of the benchmark you see that? One thing I know about vision is that it helps you to benchmark your progress. 
it helps you to benchmark your progress if you do not have a god ordained reference for your life any standard you attain greater than where you were will be enough for you did you get what i just said if you do not have a standard high enough challenging enough even if you take one step ministerially one step financially one step career wise one step in leadership once you are better than yesterday you will arrive and settle and i submit to you that there has been a territorial programming on many of us by reason of the various cultures that we come from there are cultures that by default if you are born into those cultures you stand a risk of being complacent in life not because you are evil not because those you came from are evil it is a culture that does not celebrate any press for continuity anything better than where you are is enough and some of us, we have embraced some of these things to our detriment. Once you are better than yesterday or better than someone else. And I hope you know, according to scripture, we're not called to a life of competition. Competition has become the unbecoming of many. I will always give an example in this house. Let me repeat it one last time. That if you have a student who scores 30%, another scores 20%, another 10%, another 5 and another 0 who got the highest score? 30 percent. But who passed the exam? None. If you are to award them based on that, that, that standard, you will give the award to the guy who got 30 percent. But based on the rating that shows true success, all of them failed. The guy who did not write the exam, the guy who got 0, 1, 10, 30, all failed. There are many of us who have been receiving awards for years only to find out that your score in destiny has been less than 10. It's only that those around you have so failed, you look like a celebrity. Are we together now? It is often said that in a world of blind people, the one who can see a little is usually enthroned as king. Doesn't matter what else is not seen until he later becomes a slave to another king who sees well. Are we together? Many, many people today celebrate mediocrity because they look around and they find people who are not even prepared to start the race. And because they are privileged either by mercy, by mistakes, by law of time and chance to take a step or a few steps ahead of their yesterday, ahead of those who were in their yesterday, they settle and sometimes they use those little strides. They build monuments around it and tell all kinds of disturbing stories around it. I used to be great. I used to do all of that. I'm praying for you again in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever makes you to just compare yourself with those around you and keep giving yourself fake awards, awards that the realm of the spirit is not recognizing, awards that life and destiny is not recognizing, I pray for you. That spirit of mediocrity may it live your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ vision vision is very powerful Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 2 and 3 are we learning tonight it says write the vision write the vision listen carefully then it says make it plain I like what it says that he may run that reads it not he may run that writes it the one who writes it may not run but the one who reads it who keeps revisiting that vision what god told you there is energy that comes when you open the book again and look at what he told you what he told you in 2008 what he told you in 2009 the book may be old but the vision is still fresh if you can open that old book that old ipad see what he told you you were more discerning than you are now for some of you when he told you. You can trust what he told you because the things that deadened his voice were not yet in your life. You can trust the purity of what you had that time. Are we together now? Most likely that time you were still poor. Most likely that time you were not married yet. Most likely that time you still had needs. There were obvious needs that made your retreat pure. It was true. The deception of fame have not distracted your hearing. Write the vision. It says he will run that reads it. Many of us are priding in the fact that we've written, but we've not read it. It is impossible.
impossible to keep reading and then remain complacent. I still visit my old notes today and sometimes I am flattered by the level of discernment and accuracy receiving some of the things that God said. I wonder how I got to receive those things. I know because now knowing what I know, I, I know the kind of alignment that would have brought those prophetic words. I now know that it was truly messy. Are we together? Let me tell you this. There are many of you, if you took what God told you that you wrote, if you read it and revisited it, your life would have been greatly enhanced till now. What most of you do is you write it and then give others to read it. But you don't read it yourself. You will tell people the stories. I know what God told me. I am a kingdom financier. I know what God told me. That there is an apostle within this frail vessel. There is a prophet within this frail vessel. Are we together? The reason why you have not sustained the grace to submit to the disciplines that make for that prophecy to manifest is because you stop reading it. Some of you don't even know where the notebooks are. I learned from Dr. Miles Munro before he went to be with the Lord. He said his office would seldom have awards. He's received all kinds of awards in his lifetime, but he said that he doesn't put too much of those awards. And I learned that from him quite honestly. Uh, I have received a number of awards in my life, quite, and I'm, I'm very grateful. I don't know where some of them are. Some of them are still wrapped. I've not even opened them. A few of them are in my office just because of space. But I make sure that I'm not tempted to stand there and look. I pass as I go to sit. Because when you stand there, you can become like Lot's wife. Lot's wife is a lesson to anyone who looks back. The Bible says, remember Lot's wife. Your Sodom and Gomorrah can be anywhere. And right in your office, right in the place of grace and opportunity, you can turn to a pillar of salt. Are we together? Vision. Anybody who is visionary, let me tell you the truth, has to pray that God should help them sleep. Not because they have a health problem. Because there is something that drives you. You know, sometimes I am amazed. I check the time and maybe it's nine in the morning. And next time I'm checking, it's like four or five. And I'm like, my God, what happened? And you are literally begging, God, can you add two more hours before it's 12 midnight? Some of you are tired by nine. You mean this long day, what am I going to do with all the time? It is lack of vision. It's not an attack. When you are a visionary person, let me tell you, God will have to preach to you and say, my son, take rest now. I rested. Are we together? And sometimes you wake up and check the time and you almost want to ask God for, so, for, for, for um, apologies to say, I'm sorry. It's as if you sin against your destiny. How did this time just pass like that? Because there is always what to do in the life of a visionary person. You will never find idleness. Always something to do. There's prayer to pray. You have your prayer targets. You have your word study targets. Are we together? You have your personal development targets. Your spiritual growth targets. There are things you have. You may be alone, but you are busy. Let me tell you, visionary people, when you tell people you are busy, they think you are lying. Because our idea of busy is I'm in the midst of people. You can be all alone yet so occupied that you have to beg for more time. Visionary people. Many of us here do not have vision. It's the reason why life is not worth living. No meaning, no drive, no nothing. You get up in the morning. If you are fortunate to have a destiny waster call you, or unfortunate for you, are you free? What do you want to do today? I'm, I'm, it's okay. Can I come around? Sometimes, oh, there's this movie that just came out. Are you aware? There's another one. I have all of them. I bought it. Don't worry about buying it. Let's just watch. And time and your days continue to go. And then once you finish, you move to um, Twitter, Facebook, balance it up with all the rest. And then as you finish, you can gossip and then your whole day finishes. You see that? And then you get up and wonder why others are making progress. Great news, good news is always around your camp. And for you, you are stunted. 
every distraction around your life in the name of Jesus every enemy fighting your vision I decree and declare may it give way now please be seated when you find a man with no time for marking time when you find a man with no desire to camp and build a monument around his success and his strides of today there is something greater than today driving him are we together we read that earlier i like paul he says in philippians chapter 3 we read that earlier verse 13 he says this not that i have i have apprehended 3 13 can you give us philippians 3 and verse 13 i count not myself to have apprehended i hope you know the guy speaking wrote two thirds of the new testament excellent apostle by every definition met the god of the bible a man who was not part of the apostolic community but came from behind talk about speed that peter said ah this guy i'm the chiefest of the apostle but this man his writings are hard 18 years in the wilderness of arabia came back with fire i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before. Now the emphasis is verse 14. It says, I press towards the mark. Shout it, say the mark. Yeah. One more time, say the mark. Yeah. One more time, say the mark. Yeah. Look at me. How many of you know that the way most coaches train athletes, especially those who run, the way they train them is that if you are going to be a national you know, person running for your nation for say a hundred meter dash, they don't train you with hundred meters. No, they will train you with about 150 meters. And the psychology is to program your mind to build energy, momentum, and expectation. Are we together? Like a thermostat. That means every time you cross hundred, your mind still assumes that you still have 50. That's how they train champions. If you train a champion to run a 100 meter race and you train him 100 meters, he will most likely take last. Others who stretch the bar do 200 meters. The guy is running 200 meters, but the real preparation is for 100 meters. And he will run and finish. He wants to stop, but his mind is saying, you are failing because the bar has been stretched. Some of you, your bar is too small, too small. Destiny is demanding 100 meters. Your training is 5 meters. And you keep celebrating yourself only to stand at the field and see that you're not able to cross 5. Vision is powerful. What does vision do? It gives you focus. What does vision do? It gives you legitimacy to say no. When you are a visionary person, you have a legitimate ground to say no to many things. You must learn to say no even to good things. Let me tell you, when the devil brings evil and you say no, he will bring good. The most important thing is your destruction, whether through good or evil. You must learn to say no. When you are visionary, you can tell even nice friends who are, I, I'm happy for this, but I'm sorry, I may not have the time for this. We'll reconsider another opportunity. Vision. Hallelujah. Vision gives you the discipline to supervise yourself. The discipline to supervise yourself. First hmm. Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. Paul was admonishing us and says that, Know ye not that they which run in a race, he says they run all, but only one receiveth the prize. Leaves you with a charge. He says, so run that ye may obtain. Run in such a way that at the end of your days, your life would not have been wasted. Your energy would not have been wasted ministerially, financially, family-wise, maritally, in every career-wise. He says, run in a way that you will win. Hallelujah. Vision is the first key. I can tell you by the message of God, every ministry, every business, every individual. I remember those days when we started, we were not so many, but every time we had the opportunity to gather, I would say the future of this ministry was in that word. E and I then, I would say that word I, international. The mandate was to the globe. Even when we had not gone anywhere, the mandate was to the globe. Are we together? 
the Zuckerbergs and the Elon Musks and all the people today that were celebrating, go and hear how they started. Some of them started in garages, some of them started in rooms. Are we together now? And do you know for some of them, they still maintain such a lifestyle. Do you know why? Because they are simulating an atmosphere that forces them to continue. I used to wonder why rich people deliberately make their life very modest. It's because they have found out that success beyond a level becomes cancerous. Let me repeat that. Success beyond a level becomes cancerous. It becomes a burden. First, success becomes an instrument of healing. It heals you from the perception of being a failure. Then it finally proves the point to all and sundry that you cannot be a failure again. Then it starts killing you. Most people do not know that you need to be trained to be successful. Then you need to be trained to manage success. I can tell you managing success is harder than becoming successful. Are we together? It's just that many people never really truly become successful. And so because they are obsessed with using success as a tool to heal themselves from the perception of being considered as failures, they will, no matter what the body needs, they will receive it with joy. It's like someone, um, let me just give a, a humorous example. It's like someone who is having his first opportunity to fly overseas. Say for instance, are we together? And let's say he's transiting from one nation to the other. Do you know that even if you are going to spend two days on that journey, because it is your first journey, you are happy to sit down there in an airport over a transit flight for one whole day and you are still not angry. At least you left your country. For instance, are we together? Yes. But a time comes when as you travel again and again, that pressure, the point has been proven. You will now realize that such a journey is really a burden. And a time will come you would deliberately reject such an offer because you now value other things greater than the need for validation, like your peace and your time. This is how it is with destiny. There are people who will not mind walking through fire, provided it will give people an expression of them being successful. And truly, because of your press, the point will eventually be proven. But when it is proven, you will now see the burden that comes when success is not managed. Who is learning tonight? The house of God is where we learn wisdom. So when God is telling you, take it easy, listen to him, he has never failed. It's not that he failed and learned from his failure. He has never failed. Are we together? Hmm. Vision. Vision is very powerful. There is a benchmark. Listen, there is an expectation. Man of God, your expectation is not the program you organized. Thank God for it. But if that is the only thing you have been clapping for till today, then you are not doing well. You need to trust God for grace. There is a bar. I look at Koinonia every time I stand before you and let me tell you what I see. I see what I'm doing now, but there is a dissatisfaction in my heart because I compare what I'm seeing now to what was written in that old notebook and there is still a serious gap and so while I'm preaching to you I'm, I'm, I'm hurrying up to finish with you so that I'll go back and say ah God let's cover this gap let's cover this gap thank God for what we're doing across the nations thank God for the level of anointing thank God for the level of wisdom but there is more someone shout there is more yes. one more time say there is more one of our lovely ladies sang a beautiful song and said, there is more than this. Oh yes, there is more. There is more. You must get angry within your heart and tell yourself there is more. There is more. Thank God for the level of prosperity you have gotten to from begging and borrowing. At least now you can pay your rent. Before you start wasting your time and having an arrival mentality, you see that now? For as long as you are still thinking about money and worrying about it and lying about it, you have, not, you have not arrived. So don't pat yourself at the back forever. You are not the house owner. Thank God for what he has done, but let there be a hunger in you. The day you now buy your house, thank God for it until the day you can give. Don't stop. Who is learning? Thank God for the man of God, you know? If I have any advice for people, especially, you know, sometimes people meet me who God is helping, giving visibility, and they say, Apostle, if you have any lesson, what would you teach me? I'll tell them, let me tell you. This success you see, you must learn how to manage it. If not, it will tear you like a wild animal. 
Because the higher you rise, the more impactful your fall is. If you're on the ground, you can fall and nobody knows. But when you are up, as you fall, it is even more painful. I remember a vision that I had many years ago. In that vision, I was in a program. I don't know how many times I've shared this. But I was in a program and um, I think it was the stage, a living faith stage. Like Canaan land, if I, rem if I recall. And then I was to stand and preach. But the way the stage was, you stand on the pulpit, not the ground. So there is a skill. If you don't know how to stand, you will fall. And I remember I stood there. I was shaking, but I was learning how to stand. I was not really, I didn't fall, but I was not stable at that time. When I woke up, I remember I wrote it down. I said, the devil is a liar. I must know how to stand on this thing. <laughs> Listen, I've taught you, learn how to force life to work. Learn how to force life to work. I mean what I'm saying. If you think life will work on its own, you are wasting your time. Right from the days of John until now. Businessman, if it's not working, force it to work. More knowledge, more grace, more prayer, more counsel. Force it to work. Hallelujah. If you are somebody who gives excuses, you will never be able to work with me. Never. I will be a burden to you. No, you don't come before me and give flimsy excuses. Tell me the problem and start suggesting the solution before I continue. So my people know, once you are telling me a problem, make sure at the back of your mind, you are already prepared to suggest. Ah, they stole this, uh -huh, so what are you doing now as a leader? Who is learning? Use this as a CEO. Train your people. Don't always come and bring troubles to the table. Don't promote anybody who is not providing solutions. Vision. Everybody say vision. One more time, say vision. I'd like you to be angry in your spirit this night that in the name of Jesus, every distraction, I must have a theme for my life. Are we together now? As a couple come together, we are married, we have three children, but what is the vision for this home? We just married though, and thank God that the children are growing. Uh -huh. What happens to them now? Listen, the Bible says without vision, the people perish. As an organization, what is your vision? So that by the time you hit a profit of one million, one billion, one trillion, you don't clap for yourself and say we are right. No. No. What is the vision? I listened years ago to an interview by Steve Jobs, late now. It was a 1992 interview. Listen carefully. He was doing a training, very rare video. He was doing a training for his core leaders at that time. And he was sharing with them the vision of the Apple Corporation. Do you know there was no mention of profit? There was no mention of computers in that, in that discussion. His passion was to simply make life better for people based on what he was teaching them. So the gadgets that later evolved were simply offshoots of that desire. Are you seeing that now? That's why when one gadget fails or is outdated, the vision is still the same. They invent another gadget. The vehicle is not the reason for the company. There is a goal. All the Apple phones, the gadgets, they are vehicles. Have a vision for your life. Are we together? You break that vision into goals. Then break them into steps. Strategies, steps. What is the vision for your life? What is the vision for your ministry? Let me tell you the truth. And I submit to you, you are being trained. Never follow a man who cannot define the vision. Never become part of an organization or part of any move, movement that does not have a defined vision. Where are we going? Are we together now? Vision. It may tarry, but let there be a vision. Let there be a vision for your life. Okay, we are going to Lagos. Lagos by road is how many hours now? 12. It's 12 hours, but 12 hours is not 24 hours. There are people going that way. The driver who is driving that car knows he will be 12 hours on the road. By seven hours, he looks like he's going to the end of the earth, but he's still going to get there. And suddenly, slowly but surely, are we together? Sometimes they may have to stop to rest. 
Sometimes, unfortunately, they may say there's maybe a security challenge and they may have to highlight for a while, but it doesn't deter the vision. Let me tell you this. Every time you find yourself constantly in need of motivation, especially external motivation, your vision is not strong and not clear enough. When your vision is strong and clear enough, it sustains such power, it drives you by yourself. Say in the name of Jesus. Please shout it like you believe. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that I have a vision for my life. Vision helps you to know what to be part of and what to not be part of. There are many good things you should not be part of because they will be burdens to your life, burdens to your destiny, and they will be counterproductive to your call, election, ordination. Are we together? My life is full of all kinds of proposals, people wanting me to be this, be patron in this, be this. And sometimes I politely greet them and I just reject it. I tell them, oh, I'm sorry. I may not have the liberty. There's no reason accepting this responsibility and not giving my best to it. It is wiser, better to have a few things on your table and then you commit to pressing them till they finish. Are we together? If you wake me up, it's koinonia. Call me any day is koinonia. My mind is what God is doing next through this platform to bless people, to impact that fire of revival, to reveal Jesus. Anybody who has come for koinonia at least one service must have heard something along the lines of Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. When you say this is koinonia, you are not saying this is Joshua Selman. There, is, there are different ways of capturing the vision so that it is born in your heart. It's not publicity, it is training. When you don't train believers, they become ill-trained and they become ineffective. Do you know? By the training, and I say this, I know I'm speaking to the globe, but let me talk for a moment to our family. Do you know there is an orientation we've sustained in this ministry? Whether or not you are here, it doesn't matter which of our expressions. Anywhere you find yourself, people function as though they are at home here. That means that sometimes we travel to a place and... If there was someone serving in the protocol here, once he hears that I'm coming or there's a koinonia expression, the person gets to duty immediately. It's the orientation. Your service is beyond location. It's governed by vision. Everybody say vision. vision. One more time, say vision. vision. Number two, let's hurry up. This is not your rest. Where you have attained even though you received awards there, even though you were commended there, even though you've done well there, but the Lord sent me tonight to announce to you, man of God, businessman, captain of industry, regardless how good you have done, well done, but this is not your rest. Number two, what is the second key that challenges people, provokes dissatisfaction, and causes people to continue and move beyond progress until they get to completion. Number two, the second key is maintaining a vibrant spiritual life. Maintaining a vibrant spiritual life. Spirituality is a sponsor of completion. A vibrant spiritual life. Psalm 63, please, very quickly, media help us from verse 1. Psalm 63. O oh God, thou art my God. It says, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2. It says, to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen in the sanctuary. Verse 3. It says, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. 4. Reading to 8. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. 5. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness and my mouth with praise shall praise with joyful lips. Verse 6, it says, When I remember thee upon my bed, say obsession, say passion, that this guy has left the house of God and even on his bed, his mind spiritually minded and meditate on thee in the night watches. Passion, because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. Final verse, my soul followed hard. Hard. That's the word. Show me a vibrant spiritual life 
that is always in touch with God, let me tell you this. Most times when you lose fire is because you lost presence. When you lose fire, the fire to continue, something about his presence is no longer in your life. And the factor that reminds you of that journey has died. And let me tell you this. It doesn't have to be something evil that distracts you. Sometimes the burden of responsibility, you later become an administrator like they wanted to make the apostles in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. Are we together? To leave the ministry of the word and prayer and go to serve tables and they say, no, 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 administration was not part of our mandate. Uh -uh, uh -uh. We will set up people there to do that, but we will give ourselves continually, 6 verse 4 Acts, to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and we'll read verse 5, verse 15. Then I'll show you a part I've not shown you before. Ready? And he sought God, the he being Uzziah. He sought God in the days of Zechariah. Please follow carefully. Who had understanding in the visions of God and as long as he sought the Lord. Finish it with me, Koinonia. I want to go. God made him to prosper. Jump to verse 15, please. Jump to verse 15. The Bible says he made in Jerusalem on the strength of his encounter, wisdom, creativity, witty inventions rested upon him. He made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones without. And the Bible says his name as a result of the vibrancy of his spiritual life. His name spread abroad for he was marvelously helped of the Lord till he was strong. Here is a lesson, verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his. Destruction is not only down, there is still destruction up too. His heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar when it was not his duty. That has a different discussion. But just for you to know that he got to a point in his life where God was no longer with him. Read verse 21. Same scripture, verse 21. Please give it to us. Verse 21. It says, And Uzziah the king, he became a leper, that was the consequence. When his heart left the Lord, he began to walk in defiance with God's pattern for him. The result was that he became a leper. And because he became a leper, even though a king, they banished him and his son, Jotham, now reigned in his stead. Can you imagine? A destiny that was vibrant was now cut short. And his son had to come in his stead. The Bible says, he dwelt in several houses being a leper. For he was cut off from the house of the Lord based on the ordinances God gave them about unclean people. And Jotham, his son, was over the king's house judging the people of their land. I'm praying for you. Whatever will have to make God replace you because you have become such a liability to the kingdom even in his love that he is forced to make do with another. I'm praying for you. May you never get to that point in your life. May you never get to that point in your destiny. In the name of Jesus, maintaining a vibrant spiritual life. Leviticus chapter 6, 12 and 13. It gives you the revelation on how to keep your spiritual fire burning. Listen please. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood. You see that there's a maintenance system. I can help you light the fire. But I will not help you maintain it. You have to find wood and put that wood. Talks of sacrifice. Wood. And you burn it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereof the fat and the peace offerings. 13. It says the fire shall ever be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. Spiritual vibrancy. Let me tell you this. I have taught you in this house the power of periodic retreats. No matter how busy you are, don't wait for the end of the year alone 
to practice retreats. You can create different models of retreats. Weekly, monthly, quarterly, before your birthday. We have a culture in this ministry. When it is your birthday, a few days, you shut down as much as possible and flog it out with God before you eat cakes and turkeys and all of that. Birthdays is not the time to litter social media with picture when you have not flogged it with God. Let the world celebrate you after God has assessed you. Are you learning now? What makes your birthday happy is that God told you well done. Not that you ate cake. If God does not say well done, eat anything you can eat. Your destiny is at risk. The vibrancy of your spiritual fire. Let me tell you this. Show me a man who even may not have a vision for his life but has an obsession for God. The mercy of God will fish that guy back to alignment. Are we together? For as long as that fire is there, one day by the mercy of God, he is sowing into the spirit and the Bible says, he that sows to the flesh will reap of the flesh corruption. He that sows to the spirit will reap of the spirit life eternal. Everybody is a farmer. You sow to the flesh to your detriment or sow to the spirit and reap life everlasting. Maintaining a vibrant spiritual life. Prayer life, vibrant. Word study life, vibrant. Passion for the house of God, vibrant. Passion for the things of God, vibrant. Ever vibrant in getting the teachings that build your spirit. Show me such a man. I show you a man who will never settle because by the time the devil wants to tempt him with an arrival mentality, you will come for koinonia or you will listen to one message online and at the end of it, how many of you have started listening to a message and as you got to five, six minutes, you listen to a 30 minutes message for three days because you have to stop after nine minutes and say, ah, God, mm -mm. Mm -mm. this is the character of serious people, not the one that is sleeping while the message is playing. No. You hear one word, an interpretation of scripture in a way that you've never heard. Huh? And whilst you, are, you carry that anger and transfer it to the conference, you are going to go and preach it. You hear a message for five minutes and pray for one hour first. Then you now continue and sit down again. No light, you don't care. You hold your torchlight. My destiny must answer. You are suffering, you are poor, things are not working. One revelation, one revelation, one revelation. Are we together now? Yes. One revelation, fire from the altar just comes and you stay with that scripture. And sometimes, do you know, you will be surprised that you will see something that was not even in the message. Because the spirit of grace is there helping you, bringing greater enlightenment. And from that vibrance, you will write certain things. A message of 10 minutes can become a series for you for one way. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whatever is eating up your spiritual vitality and you've been watching it continue like that, may you receive grace tonight to fight it to death. Grace to fight it to death grace to fight it to death in the name of Jesus there are a few indices that test spirituality let me tell you and I, I want you to be able to these are like you know how you go to the hospital and they check your vitals there are a few vitals that once you check and you find out there's a problem meet a doctor immediately not a medical doctor and not a witch doctor a doctor meaning a teaching priest, a spiritual person who helps you. You see that? Among them, let me tell you this. You see this thing called gluttony. Gluttony. An irresistible appetite for food. Now food is good, don't get me wrong. I mentioned food now, some of you are not happy. Food. <laughs> it is a great test of spirituality if you can tame your eating. Am I saying it's not good? Go and eat. What I'm saying, the moment is something that you cannot resist. Number two, sleep. 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 As much as sleep is a very important thing, you need to be careful. Some of you slumber. You wake up, the Holy Ghost wakes you. 
and just to get up and stretch yourself and take your destiny serious there are many people who will not do that slumber are we together number three the eroding of your values eroding of your values eroding of your values vibrancy spiritually I'm praying for you in the name that is above all names that every attack on your spiritual life I hope you know when the devil attacks your spiritual life it's not just prayer he's attacking you know it's not just the word he's attacking are we together it's not just your consecration he's attacking let me tell you what he's attacking he's attacking what prayer will achieve what the study of the word will achieve your prayer and the rest and the word study is not the end it's the means to an end that your life becomes a greater host of his power and his glory and let me tell you the truth as he's fighting it bar you will not see the destruction in one day just allow it continue one day to fall upon you like a pack of card and you will see that there is no strength again for someone you came to church tonight for a renewal and i'm praying for you whatever has quenched your fire upon that altar in the name of jesus since the spirit of man is the candle of the lord may the spirit of the living god light that candle afresh light that candle afresh look at me please you don't off a rotating fan by risking your hand to stop the blades from moving how do you off a rotating fan you disconnect it from source am i right you disconnect it from source once you match even if it's by mistake the cord that connects it to the power source the blade will still be rotating sometimes still fast and then gradually gradually and then at any time it stops and sometimes it can stop one day to you entering the next season of your prophecy hallelujah why is it that people do not obtain the grace to finish why is it that they become complacent the destructions that come to you the suggestions that come to you when you reduce yourself from spirituality to carnality what am I doing now? Tell me the progress. Am I doing very well? What is your self? What are they saying about you? And then if you surround yourself with psychophants and naysayers, ah, you are king of kings and lord of lords. In fact, the last person said you're kind of anointing. From Bible days, aside from Paul, nobody has had it. And you say, you mean it? And you foolishly believe that thing because the spirit of counsel is no longer with you. Counsel comes with might. There is something you hear to sustain your strength. Is someone learning now? I'm planting a fire in you tonight that you can see a man of God after you return from a meeting, lifting people from wheelchairs. You get back to the place of prayer as if you have never healed the sick before. Now, that is the attitude of a winner in the spirit. That's the attitude of a winner. I tell you the truth before God and I lie not. It doesn't matter what kind of meeting I go to. It doesn't matter how spectacular the manifestations of God. As soon as I return back, once I leave that church auditorium, I return back, Father, thank you. Once I'm done from Koinonia, I get back home, get on my knees. Lord, I'm grateful for the mighty things you have done. Next, get to work. You check my phone now. There is a series of teachings that I'm following building my own capacity. I suspended it to come to church to teach. When I return back home, I have to listen to the quarter that I have and then listen to tonight's teaching. No matter how tired, it's a ritual, it's a covenant. They say uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Most people want a crown that is clearly not the size of your head. See that? You are so small, the crown will even fall down. Your whole body cannot even carry it. And yet we wish and covet things we don't have capacity for. Build your spiritual fire. Build your capacity. For someone, you are saying, Apostle, where do I start? Your prayer life. Immediately I will tell you, your prayer life. Make up your mind. Are we together? One of the things that I'm designing by the Spirit of God now is... A ministerial model for koinonia that 
to become a minister anywhere across the globe, Koinonia Global, these are the standards that you must keep. Non-negotiable. Prayer standards, fasting standards, word standards, leadership standards, development standards. If you cannot go through this, unfortunately, it doesn't matter who you are. You are, for, you are short of the standard. So that at every point you can standardize impact. Huh? Whether it is US, UK, whatever, that anywhere you know that there is a certain threshold of spiritual impact you will not fall short of. Please go back to your altar. Get the word. Go back. Some of you, you have not finished one book of the Bible this year. One. Not even Jude. Not even Jude. You are not even aware that you can finish Jude. It's bad. It's bad. I owe you to teach you. It's bad. I'm telling you, if no one has told you, it is bad. And it is evil if you are a pastor. What are you teaching then? Do you know? You can't teach in ignorance. So you need high level intellectual and spiritual knowledge. You need to join two of them together. Take one minute to blast in tongues and say, Father, fire from heaven, let it fall upon me. Fire from heaven, fall upon me. Word study fire, prayer fire, fall upon me. Please go ahead and pray. For as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. Oh, there's no arriving in God. No arriving. Ever hungry. Ever passionate. Ever hungry. Ever passionate. In the midst of exploits, still striving for more. In the midst of great things, still pressing for more. In the midst of mighty things, refusing to be distracted by results. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. No settling in the name of Jesus Christ. Vibrant spiritual life. Vibrant spiritual life. Are you still praying? Prime your hunger. Come on. Prime your hunger. Prime your hunger. Prime your hunger. Multiply your dissatisfaction. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. Number three, let's hurry up. You want to be hungry and dissatisfied enough to finish. Not just make progress. Not just have results. Are we together? You want to move past the realm where results just heal you that they provoke you to the next level. You want to last, you want to finish. The third key, are you ready now? You must be and remain a student of history. The third key that pushes men until they finish is that you must become and remain a student of history. There is something about history in as much as I've challenged you over yesterday there is something about history that educates you today and gives you the passion to drive. History can be powerful. There are lessons to learn from yesterday. History sustains such a rich heritage of wisdom. When you read about those who started and did not finish. You are a man of God. There are certain mistakes you should not make in righteousness. Because there are enough people who made it in yesterday to educate you. There are people whose lives show the consequences of prayerlessness. There are people whose lives show the consequences of violating the patterns that preserve grace. There are people whose history shows how they took God for granted and they paid for it. The things that are written aforetime, Romans 15, 4, I believe. The Bible says they are written for our learning. Whatsoever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning. That we, through patience and the comfort of scripture, might find hope. Let me tell you this. The direct consequence of wisdom from history is humility. 
the moment you find people excessively proud they have short memories history is a teacher history is a track record has a track record of being a very brilliant lecturer it can teach you there have been billionaires who crashed down to nothing there have been vibrant men of god who were instruments of envy in their generation and they crashed down there have been vibrant people who made a shipwreck and there were others who did not start well but finished well there were others who started well and finished well like the prodigal son he started well something happened but he finished well there are various variations a buffet of lessons to pick from from history are we together you are not the first to be poor you are not the first to be born poor you are not the first to be rich who most likely would die poor you are not the first to be anointed you are not the first to lose the anointing you are not the first to take God for granted ask Herod ask Uzziah David shed so much blood when he wanted to build God a house God said David I love you but there is an ordinance who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy hills he that has clean hands you have a pure heart but you don't have clean hands you can't do this transfer it to Solomon are we learning you must be a student of history there's a saying that if you see your neighbor's beard on fire while you are criticizing him look for water quickly and soak your own look for water and do what because your beard is made of the same material and so if you see your neighbor's bed burning get water and soak your own first before you pray for your neighbor because that fire intends to spread it doesn't intend to stay with your neighbor students of history when you study history that's why it's important to read books and study materials some of the people who wrote those books have gone to be with the Lord and some of them were honest enough to show you both their crowns and their scars refer to my teaching lessons from an overcomer I have read books where the people were open they did not hide anything they told you their pain they told you their mistakes they told you where they missed it they saw the consequences they told you how they were restored and as you read it you are seeing yourself in their yesterday and you are saying Lord grace that when you get to a pitfall grace to jump I'm praying for someone where you have ignored history you have ignored the warning that has come from others look at me listen when Lazarus are we still Bible students when Lazarus met with the rich man at the bosom of Abraham the rich man requested when he saw you know the, the rich man was busy burning and Lazarus was at Abraham's bosom the Bible says the first request was please let Lazarus dip his hand in water and quench my thirst I'm not looking for a cup and he said no that's not possible here and he says next option please I'm perishing here but can Lazarus go back to the earth and tell my brethren that there were decisions I made with my life that landed me here do you know what he was told he said this doesn't need to go he said they have Moses and they have the prophets that means there are people I have given insight to there are principles and there are insights from the spirit they can tap into realities beyond their understanding and bring it through the frame of their mind and communicate it if they will not listen to them even if someone were to come from the dead and speak to them they will not listen you know what that means there are people today who are custodians of history both the pain and the crown of history and sometimes they are honest and lavish enough to teach you and tell you this is how it works it is the reason why dishonoring fathers is foolishness of the highest order they may not be perfect though, but they have they are custodians of history they have navigated through the waters of time and that they are still sailing till today there is something they know 
experience is not the best teacher but he's a teacher especially as taught by a survivor are we learning be a student of history this business you are doing who has done it before this ministry you are doing who has done it before this persecution you are going through who has gone through it before that's the reason why the Bible is such a spectacular book because it has an array of life situations and how people came out of it. You literally have the liberty to pick the one that relates to your current state and there will be a, a straight line, a compass from your pain to your joy. The Bible. Be and remain a student of history. Help those under the anointing. Are we learning tonight? History reveals hidden dangers. History educates. History enlightens. History reveals codes that open up doors in the future. Number one, vision. Keys that provoke dissatisfaction, plant hunger, and sponsor continuity until you finish. Vision. Two, you must maintain a vibrant spiritual life. Number three, you must become and remain a student of history. Learn from yesterday. Learn from yesterday. Number four, are you ready? The fourth key that helps people to drive until they finish is mentorship. 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 What is mentorship? An opportunity for you to learn through the wisdom the experience, the pain of others who have gone ahead of you. An opportunity to learn the wisdom, the pain, the experience of others. I wrote something here and I want you to listen. Mentorship creates the platform for your progress. Mentorship celebrates your progress. And mentorship challenges you to press for greater heights. Mentorship creates literally the platform for your progress. And mentorship celebrates your progress while you are following that path. And then it challenges you to press for greater heights. If these three things doesn't happen to you, you are not enjoying mentorship. Number one, I repeat, it creates the platform for your progress. Literally, creating a platform by teaching, by educating, by training, by bringing enlightenment, by pruning, by correcting, creates a platform, sets you on the sail to an excelling life, spiritually and otherwise. The same mentorship is there to celebrate you. An example of a mentor is a coach. Bring an athlete who would later become a world champion. Literally from nothing, that coach begins to build him. Are we together? Perhaps that person comes most likely overweight, fagged out, joints not moving and the coach literally begins to set the sail for that person to be a great boxer, a great athlete or whatever it is, a footballer. And then the coach is usually at the field celebrating the goals that are scored. When uh, a player, a footballer, especially soccer player, when he scores the goal, usually after rejoicing with the colleagues, some of them run to their coach. I did it. You said I'm a champion and they come and give them a big hug. Then go back to continue playing. Only a foolish player scores a goal and then goes to sit down and says, I'm done. I mean, that's it. Provided the final whistle is not blown, anything can happen. History is full of scenarios, especially in soccer, where sometimes at the 11th hour, people's pride were turned to pain and lessons. Footballers, you see, remember? Mentorship. It is important for you to have people and systems in your life that your success cannot intimidate. Did you hear what I said? If everybody around you is intimidated by your success, none of them qualifies to be a mentor to you. There must be someone in your life that no matter the stride, you can return back, receive a pat at the back, and even without being told, you still know that there is a bar that is higher. 
Are we together? Unfortunately, what most people call mentorship is not mentorship because the people they claim to look up to, they are greater than them by every standard. And while wisdom is not dependent on physical results, there is an expression that must keep you humble. The human spirit does not easily get humble until there are obvious results. Are we together? If a billionaire is mentoring you, the first day you make one million dollars, it will be a miracle to all your contemporaries. See, I mentioned money and people, who knows? Maybe that's the grace that is flowing. You don't believe it. Most of us don't need it. But for those who need it, why not? Are we together? So, you make a million dollars and among your contemporary subordinates, you are a miracle worker. But you now get to a mentor and you say, Sir, I made a million dollars. And he says, Oh, really? Interesting. That means the law is working. All right, congratulations. Pay your tithe. Go and uh, sow a seed and then get to work. Let's go to the next phase. It means I'll become harder and stricter on you. And you're like, So everybody's celebrating me. That's the purpose of mentorship. A mentor is not a friend. Are we together? No. A mentor is one who challenges you till he brings out the best. Sir, just to let you know that I went for a meeting and my God, I began to see a grace manifest through me that I've never seen. I was calling out names and prophesying and someone rose up from the wheelchair. And he says, wow, that's interesting. Okay, so that's all right. Let's get to work. Are we together? There must be a benchmark that is high. High. Oh, sir, just to let you know, by the grace of God, I've been able to build my house. And he says, congratulations, but don't settle till the day you start building it as a seed in the house of God. Let's get to work. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. Everything that makes you settle over small results, I challenge it from your life in Jesus' name. Listen, I want to make a statement at the risk of sounding arrogant. Let me say this. If you are a man of God or a businessman or anybody frontiering the management and the building of people, let me tell you the truth. Your first assignment is to do the best in righteousness to make a major part of the world work in your own life. It is more convincing. Your leadership is more powerful as God grants you grace to enjoy certain obvious results in your life. Are we together now? There are things that when you are teaching people, even if they don't understand, they will believe you. And it will be foolish to argue it because you are not the one at a loss. Are we together now? Yeah. It's the reason why we must keep praying, even as leaders, greater evidence. Back me up, oh God. Greater results. Do you know, many things I'm saying now, I said the same thing years ago, but it, not, it did not carry the same effect because there were certain results that needed to be added. Are we together now? Yes. The same thing I'm saying now, if Christ tarries, I will be saying it 10 years to come, but the, there will be an audience that is not listening now, but they will listen then because your profiting would have appeared. Hallelujah. With all humility, I'll share with you something. I remember when we had our first you know, international conference. Sit down, sit down, please. And, you know, when God did the wonderful things that he did, when I returned back to the country and preached, my message on Sunday when we returned from that conference was, who is on the Lord's side? And after I was done, I returned back. Someone sent a long text, great person I used to know years ago. And he said, Apostle, you said this thing. He said, as I watched on YouTube, and I saw, he said he kept crying almost all through, especially the final session. And that he went back and cried to God. We were not necessarily very close, but then he was around and he heard the things that people were saying. And he said, my God, look at this. That the thing challenged him and he was telling his wife. He said, no excuse again. No excuse again. The same Lord is rich unto all. And he wrote something there. He said, I admit that I deserve to be where I am because I was not serious with God. I just encouraged him and said, look, you can start from any level. God grants grace. 
I'm praying for you. May it never be that while God is giving you an opportunity to be mentored, as others are learning, you are sitting down acting, I know, I know. I'm praying that after 10 years, 20 years, 5 years, 2 years, you will not look back and be angry at those who are your friends today simply because you refuse to listen. He said, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He says, they are life. To those who find them and held to their flesh i pray for you the malleability to receive the malleability to be trained from my heart i declare may god supply that grace for you <laughs> hallelujah mentorship is showing you a road map minus the pain factor minus the pain factor please sit down please sit down <laughs> i remember Years ago, a very sincere man, you know, he came and he was talking to me then when Zaria. And um, he met me and he said, Apostle, you know, and he was complaining about finances. And I was just trying to calm him down. I wanted to truly just explain a few things to him. Because I was seeing from what he was saying, decisions that he was making that were not correct. But he would not know. You see, Ba, ignorance is like being a child. A child does not know he's a child until he grows. Is there any child that knows he's a child? No. Until you grow and look at your yesterday's picture, you'll be like, my God, you mean I was this small? No baby knows he's a baby. That's how ignorance is. So you can be making a lot of mistakes and not know because the frame of your understanding cannot teach you otherwise. It is until you grow and look at your former self, you will be surprised. So I was trying to talk to the gentleman in love. You know, he was a father of, I think, two children or so, if I recall. And I was saying, sir, and then he, the man shot me down. He was angry and I understood. He shot me down. He said, do you know what it means to pay the school fees of, was it two or, or four children? I can't remember. Maybe... Do you know what it means to pay the school fees of four children? And I kept quiet. I said, I'm sorry. At that time, I'm not sure I was paying school fees for less than 100 people. And I was just looking at the man. I said, let's pray. You know that kind of prayer. Father, you are the God of all mercy and grace. You send rain both on the good and the evil. I commit to you. You know that kind of general prayer, not saying anything exactly. Let that man just live in peace. I used to counsel then and a gentleman came and as soon as he entered where I was counseling, I saw a spirit behind him. And you know, men of God, sometimes, especially when you start ministry, you are burning with a lot of zeal. And I was trying to explain to him that there was a situation I was seeing in the spirit. The man shot me down. I said, I cannot have any spirit following me. I can't, I mean, that guy just shot me down. I kept quiet. This is how I sat down. I understand he, he preached I'm sure he read a book and he was trying to be to believe what he read and I told him I said okay let me pray for you do you know it was after one hour or so the guy got up from the ground after shouting manifesting disturbing everywhere he went home and over the next two or three days he kept sending me a text he said apostle what happened I mean I believed all these things and he was surprised he said, me, you know that status of a man of God and with all the things he has said on stage. Here is the guy rolling a, 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 around as if something is wrong with him. And it was not a revelation problem. Because he knew what he knew. And yet there was a, still a spirit there. See, Ba, there are heights in the spirit. Oh. There are levels in the spirit. Apollos, Listen, you have done well. But there are things. There are things. There are things in the spirit. There are heights. There are dimensions in the spirit. We have handled this thing about the anointing for a while. But Kai, there are levels. 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 I'm challenging someone who is following online. Maybe you are a man of God. Great. You have results. Let me tell you this. Come to terms with the fact that there are levels in the spirit. And honestly, not everybody is on that level. 
there are dimensions God has brought me to there was not there there are dimensions I've not yet gotten to and I aspire by God's grace that I'll be able to touch certain dimensions in the spirit but once you have an arrival mentality you will surround yourself with mediocrity till you become frustrated and I have taught you woe betides a man of God who becomes exhausted in the presence of members members are interesting people they know when you don't have anything to offer again they will still say yes sir they will still say emoji my pastor my but in their heart they know you have you are plateaued there's no more again are we together yes there are helpers who know when you don't need them again because the seeds they are giving you does not have an assignment again you have plateaued in vision you have plateaued in wisdom you have plateaued in power of what benefit is still investing in your ministry do you know every time when i pray for the givers in koinonia i pray i say lord let the people who give to this ministry never become frustrated because they cannot see the fruit that comes from their giving are we together there is a way you give and you see that you are helping the nations receive. You can hear a message and as a giver, as a partner, you can say, my God, thank God for my seed. I'm inspired to do more. By the mercies of God, I help a lot of people. I take care of so many people and families. And sometimes, especially for the ones that are in school, when they return with their results, you see them happy waiting to show me. And they show me and sometimes you can see nine straight A's and I'm like my God give me a big hug what do you want you see and all of that and then the ones who didn't do too well you see them feeling bad I said no don't worry you can start again but I know how motivated I am as a man when I see results are we together just know that there is more than what you have seen the body that was healed in your meeting is not the greatest that can be healed the prophecy you gave, no matter how accurate, it is one over ten. It is still F. Create a bar. My God, become like Samuel. Are we together now? That his word does not fall. That if you tell people, lift up your hands, someone will say, thank you. He's finally about to speak. Not as human worship. They have learned by experience how powerful your words are. Our Father in the Lord, that the Jew will stand and say, there's somebody here. To many people, if you come to me and I say there's somebody here, you may say, no, I call my name now. But why do you go there and he says there's somebody there and you are satisfied? Because you have seen a track record. Are we together now? There is more, there is more, there is more. So someone, I came with a prophetic word for you. This is not your rest. Oh, woman of God, this is not your rest man of god this is not your rest businessman this is not your rest god has a lot more he only tested you he only tested you allow mentorship to become a ladder and for some of you a lift don't be try to reinvent the wheel whereas there is a way there is a way of the anointing there is a way of ministerial exploits there is a way of power there is a way of transgenerational influence there is a way of freshness there is a way of ever increasing grace there is a way you can tap into wisdom that you can prove there is a way of accessing the graces that compel kings to hear you there is a way when God brings it close to you. Don't fight it. My son, hear the words of my mouth. Attend to my sayings. Attend to my sayings. There is a way to be wealthy. You have gone around this mountain long enough. You didn't find it. Sit down and learn. Sit down and learn. Apostle, I got a job. It didn't work. I claim I'm a businessman, it didn't work. I started programs, it didn't work. My brother, sit down. You're not the first to look for money. If it's not working, there is something you don't know and a grace you do not have. Are you learning? You are still struggling to build a house and people are building nations. Sit down. There's something you don't know. You organize a program, for instance, with all due respect. 
you put posters everywhere nobody came sit down there is something you don't know are we together now what is it that does not make quality people it makes quality people run away from you nobody of influence comes to you there is something you don't know sit down for someone you must challenge yourself no I, I'm tired of entertaining bankruptcy of results I must press press until things work in my life hallelujah this issue of begging for rent every month every year begging for rent Lord there is a way out in the name of Jesus I am tired I've read the books I didn't see the lights there I did whatever I didn't see the lights there go to them that sell and buy go to them that sell and buy there are many many people saying I'm a billionaire owing all around you see that now but they will not sit down to learn mentorship demands an awareness light comes from a higher dimension to the dimension that is needed if I stand before a man of God who is more grace than me I will be stupid to stand and say you know what uh, pray for me imagine me going to one of our fathers and say pray for me no I will not do that be stupid pray for me no I will find what to do if it's a seed to connect a book to read something to listen to that connects and transfers that grace are we together now don't be ashamed learning from those ahead of you does not remove the title that in in boxing there's featherweight is it featherweight light middleweight eh? or lightweight feather or lightweight there is middleweight you can be a lightweight champion huh you are a champion but there are people you will still not try you don't have to be spiritual to not try them you will die because when you get to the realm of heavyweights even those who are beaten there are still champions there is a realm where both the winner and the loser as champions they have crossed a certain mark Let me tell you, there are people, if you see the weight they carry in the spirit, if you think it is their words that will tell you their weight, you'll be making a mistake. We have all kinds of animals in the world. We have elephants. We have giraffes. We have hippopos. And most of these animals don't make too much noise. But you measure them or go online and find out their weight, you won't believe it. The blue whale, for instance, these are fishes that are, you know, sizes of, of, of boats and ships. It is says that I think the heart of a blue whale, if I'm not mistaken, the heart is about a, ve a vehicle, a car. The heart oh, is like the car you are entering. And yet the thing is quietly moving in the water. And there are tiny animals that you can't see, only the noise. Have you seen animals that like cricket? You know it's somewhere and the noise is what will bring you to it to kill it because it won't keep quiet. doesn't have any defense and it won't keep quiet. There are many people who are like that. Brrr, and you are watching, you are saying, my God, what is, the, what is this? A fool, even if he's silent, you are regarded wise until you truly become wise. This is not your place. This is not your rest. This is not your rest. Get angry in your spirit. If you have the call of God upon your life here, let tonight's teaching challenge you. Get angry. Listen to teachings. Listen to teachings. Build capacity. Are we together now? Build capacity. Build capacity. Please be seated. Let me give you the last key and then I'll do an impartation on your head. Mentorship. Number five. The fifth key and this will be the final for tonight. If it is true that this is not your place, then you must be humble. You must be humble. Practice humility. James 4 and verse 6. The fourth key that I will give you tonight that will plant a hunger for more. Humility. 
Many years ago, I read a book by Rick Joyner called The Final Quest. Many of you have read that book. And the book is an animation of the realm of the spirit as revealed to him. And it simulated a lot of scenario, you know, using many traits of the flesh and the spirit. So it personified certain traits like humility, like prayer, like power. So uh, if, if somebody who were humble, you would see an expression like a warrior wearing an armory. And I remember, if I recall very well, in, you know, towards the end of the book, he said there was somebody who could not see far and there was like a glass that was blinding the person and the name of the blindfolding glass was called pride. That individual wore, he had capacity, but he wore that glass of pride and he could not see evil forces that were ganging up together to come and attack him. It took someone to talk to him and as he repented and broke down in humility, a simulation of that in the realm of the spirit was that those glasses were taken away and suddenly he saw that there was already a build up of an attack let me tell you this pride is a blinder it stops you from seeing what is coming to kill you it stops you from seeing opportunities that lift you to the next level if there is anything at all that i dread in my life is pride pride Always acknowledge the Lord as the basis for any results. We live in a world where there is an obsession to receive the applause of men and to make it look as though it were by our power. I think I was listening to, was it Dr. Paul Enche? Not too long. Was having a meeting, uh, I think one of his sons. And I was just sitting in the living room and they were airing it and I decided to listen. I was so blessed. He was talking about people who had not gone anywhere, arriving, and I just, I sat down. I said, look at this man with the kind of grace that God has given him and the kind of exploits. When a man with that kind of result is talking about humility, you listen. You listen. The foolish will argue to their detriment. Are we together? And I listen. I, I turned that meeting to a prayer meeting quietly in the parlor. Shabaka parakatusia. Lord, some of us who are coming from behind, grant us grace. Grant us grace to swallow our pride. The moment you become uncomfortable acknowledging the help of God in your life, the moment you become embarrassed acknowledging the help of God in your life, you are dying already. Pride is eating you up. Are we together? Yeah. It's important. There are things that you have to be very careful about. I will tell you a story, something that I've not shared with you. An institution called me and they told me, Sir, we sat as a board and we want to give you an honorary PhD. And I told them, I said, you know what? Um, you're making me very uncomfortable now. People should just, I, I appreciate all of you and thank you very much. I'm building relationship with you people and I, please, I'm a child of God. Just allow me um, to just go and stay with God and please, I know it may not easily be your policy, you're a secular institution, but please, if you just allow me let me just stay with God. I will get back to you. Till today, I've not gotten back to them. Not because, um, you know, I just think about myself and I say, Lord, I'm trying to decongest my things of the things that stop me from finishing. You know my heart more than myself. Is this thing going to kill me? God has not answered me till today. And I refuse to answer them. Who knows? Maybe the answer is yes. You see that? You have to be honest with God, though. In this business of destiny nobody is too anointed to fail you can carry all the anointing on your head and crash like you did not get anything hallelujah I love success I desire greatness and I thank God for the beats that he's done in my life but it's always been my prayer and my cry and my passion that God will protect this fragile heart, 
this vulnerable heart that likes power this vulnerable heart that likes influence huh this vulnerable heart that likes name apostle joshua selman when i go to pray i say lord hold this my heart and wrap it wrap it again wrap it again and help me because this bedeviled world even judas can give you something you think if judas comes to you now he will kiss you no the spirit of the the, the, the devil in reinvents himself when he came to jesus it was a kiss for you now he knows you are hungry he will bring bread he's still judas judas is a system that can use your vulnerabilities and destroy you he knows that jesus is called the bible says god is love and he came with a kiss when he comes to you who is hungry he comes with bread when it comes to you who likes hearing people say things about you, he will come like Ahitophel and speak well, but all the same is still Judas. I'm praying for some of you who are already eaten up by pride, gathering psychological awards in front of you that is blinding you from seeing what God is doing. You see that? There's a difference between pride and boasting. You can be arrogant and not boastful. Boastful is giving expression to pride. The worst kind of pride is the one that does not come with boasting because nobody can easily see it to address you. You carry a semblance of humility and yet you are absolutely full of yourself. The one who runs his mouth, at least that one can even receive deliverance fast because people know immediately that you, this your pride. But the one who keeps quiet and in his mind he's saying, okay, I'm here and I'm, I'm looking. The Bible says, say not in your heart. Two places in scripture, Deuteronomy chapter eight, let it not be that when your heart is lifted up, are we together? And then Romans chapter 10, it says, say not in your heart. Your heart has a voice. That is the voice of pride. Because most times when it is lifted against the counsel of God, it is your, your destruction. I want you to finish. I want you to continue. This is November. And in one month, by the grace of God, we're going to be wrapping this year. Do you know? That your destiny is counting every day and i owe you to use the principles of scripture are we together there are times that we settle over doctrine directly we examine certain things the believers identity your union with christ but there are certain times that the messages come tailor-made to address the current needs of your life and to become for you not just a source of enlightenment but a road map my goal for you is not just to be enlightened my goal for you is to also make constructive progress towards your life and destiny and occasionally god is god gives us words that help to build us in a firm understanding of doctrine your right in christ you know the ways of the spirit the holy spirit the flesh the spirit man the spirit life but there are times god brings messages that help us to navigate through the maze of destiny so that whilst you know god whilst you learn doctrine you obtain wisdom by scripture to arrive well are we together now this is not your rest it says arise and depart arise and depart Arise and depart. This is not your rest. Arise and depart. 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 Turn away from that thing. It doesn't matter how successful you are. You sang a great song. Thank you. But go forward. The Bible says, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. It says, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin. Every weight and the sin. Every weight and the sin. Some of you are laying the sin, but you are leaving weights. The weights don't have to be evil. Weights is anything that can impede you. It can affect you an extra luggage in your life. It will be a tragedy, Koinonia, hear me. It will be a tragedy that one day we wake up and then we see you at the corridors of shame, the corridors of compromise, and the corridors of failure. And if we ask you why, you will say it is because I succeeded for a season. Apostle, when I was a failure, I loved God. I fasted. I prayed. I came to church. But the moment I became a millionaire, the moment my name started appearing on posters, the moment I was upgraded to a managerial role, the moment I became a captain of industry, reckoned by all and sundry friends and allies, the moment I became a politician, commissioner, governor, whatever. 
the moment I became an apostle, a prophet, with my lifting, my fire died. With my lifting, I became visionless. With my lifting, my prayer died. With my lifting, my focus, my concentration, everything died. It will be a tragedy. The Lord has sent me with this word to speak to someone. Arise. Not just shine this time around. Depart. Depart. You need to wave your crowns. Look at them one more time. You still are my own, even if you are not on my head. There is another kind of crown I need on my head. So I'm happy. Are we together now? Yeah. Get back to that place of fire. Get back to that place of power. While you are looking at 300 people, Abraham, from your house, trained men, 312 thereabout, my goal for you is to be the father of nations. Do not allow the 312 thereabout people make you so feel that you are a success that you cannot open up yourself for the more. The more that I'm doing, the more that I'm providing in your life. Let me tell you the truth. Some of you, God has prospered you. But the reason why your finances stopped was pride came into your heart. The truth is you are not begging for money. You will never beg for money again. But you will never also be able to do the things that you should do. Do you know the wealthier you become, the more the expectation of the kingdom. There is a kind of offering today I cannot give God. It will be seen between me and God. There is a kind of help today. If people are giving to the house of God, there is something I cannot give less. It's not pride. To me and God it will be seen. Because God will say, no, I've shown you mercy more than this. To whom much is given, much is required. There is a time I cannot pray less. It will be seen between me and God. I will be wasting the grace that he has given. That kind of prayer life will be so somebody who just got born again. Or somebody who is just going through maybe a foundational things in the spirit. There is a level. God can stay with me all through the night and not apologize for taking my time. Because the level of grace is given can afford that kind of discipline. Are we together now? Yes. If God tells me to empty my account today, he will not need to tell me twice. It will be a bad thing. Do you know why? Because he's trained me to the point that he has shown me his faithfulness beyond that level of doubt. That's why he was strict on Moses. Moses, you were with me for 90 days. Zechariah, you are a high priest ministering. There are certain to, to whom much is given. There is a standard of impact that must happen from my life in every meeting. If I ever go below that standard, I will go back to God and cry and say, what happened? It doesn't matter if men are clapping. It's me and God that knows the benchmark. You see, in our school of ministry, when it's only A and B, we don't do C, we don't do D, we don't do E. For those of you preparing to attend next set, this is a teaser. If you C, E, F, you are not going to graduate. It's only A and B. And that standard came from my work with God. There are things God expects. If God grants me the opportunity to teach in a conference, if God grants me the opportunity to meet strategic people and I have 10 minutes of their attention and I waste their time, heaven will say no. It is a difficult thing to find somebody I lift to this level. And now that I brought you, you did not prepare Dotham prospered because he prepared his way before the Lord. Is someone learning? Please, you are an adult. Drop that feeding bottle. Drop that feeding bottle prayer, feeding bottle Bible study, feeding bottle giving. Some of you, God has marvelously helped you, but you are at levels less than unbelievers even those who got born again are more efficient in their kingdom service let it change hallelujah let it change my message for you tonight is this is not your rest that was the singular test that distinguished those who will continue with Gideon 32,000 people came out when he blew the shofar but he still he still took some down about 20,000 thereabout he kept reducing them and all of them went to a river and there was a strategy those who bent down to take those who lap like dogs I always saw that thing and it did not make sense to me how is it that those who lap like dogs 
are the ones he says to go. Do you know why? Because when animals go to the river, they take water and do the things they do with their feet standing. They know they will continue the journey. Those who settle there are the ones who are asked to go home. No matter what God does on the way, whilst you're on the way actualizing destiny, if manna ever falls from heaven, don't be busy packing it forever. Pack for the journey and say, Lord, I continue with you. Are we together? Now I want you to rise up. You are going to pray and then I speak over your life. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. I want to give you one minute to cry before the Lord. For those of you who have not started honestly experiencing any manifestation of kingdom success in your life, spiritually, financially, in leadership, in ministry, your prayer is that God will grant you grace to begin to make progress. Let it be a consolation to your Christian experience. But for those particularly who God has helped to achieve some results in ministry, my major prayer for you now which should be your prayer first is that god will help you to engage these keys let it plant a hunger within you lord take away arrival mentality arrival mentality that has tampered with my prayer life tampered with my hunger tampered with my love my zeal humility to serve lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray pray passionately pray seriously Arise and depart that level. Arise and depart that dimension. Arise and depart. Depart from those celebrating you. You have received enough applause for that level. Move to the next level. Move to the next season. Come on, someone is praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen very carefully. You've heard me say it many times. I'll say it one last time before I speak over your life. The Lord spoke to me years ago. And he said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. There is nothing. I submit to you at the risk of sounding proud. One of the greatest blessings in my life today is detachment from things. I stand before the God of heaven. I'm speaking to the globe. May God forgive me if I'm lying. But things have no power over my life. Car, chair, tea, bread. Whether I enter a tractor or I enter an SUV or I enter a golf or a bike or whatever it is simply for the physical convenience as far as my orientation is concerned it makes no difference to me i tell you sincerely i tell you sincerely there are things today because of the level god has brought me people may never allow me to do it whether for security reasons or just personal efficiency but it, it does not take anything from me and it's the reason why many times I deliberately create things that keep me in touch with a simple life. It has proven to be a wise way of balancing between honor, this so-called celebrity life. Are we together? Sometimes I kneel down quietly and when I'm crying before God, I remind myself again. I like seeing my old books because there are stories behind them. All these iPads and wonderful things, I thank God for them. But I like seeing the old books. A bit torn, not too fresh, but as ancient as ancient words. I open them and I watch my sincerity as I wrote before the Lord. I, I did some of those things and sometimes I'm amazed at the time. 3.30 a.m., 2.20 a.m., 4.30 a.m. Very strange times. Hallelujah. You write them down there. Go back home tonight. Put your life to order. 
Some of you go, you have iPads, I respect you. You have devices, go and buy a notebook. Look for a wedding jotter, a birthday jotter. Add it to those things. Write. There are things you need to write. Come up with resolutions. Father, I make up my mind. This scattered prayer life, it needs to come to order. It is better to pray one hour as a discipline. Be effective. And then you can grow from there. One thing to do five hours, eight hours, when you cannot do 15 minutes, you are only wasting your time. Start from there. If you are not consistent in the study of God's word, go and buy a devotional. Humble yourself. Even if they call you MOG, go and buy a good devotional and humble yourself from people who have become addicted to the word that they can help others to be strong and settle down. Are we today? Make up your mind. Create times for retreat. Take some time alone with God. If you are busy and you are a working class person, use your nights. Even if it's 30 minutes, one hour. Come up with a healthy spiritual ritual. And when people ask you, why are you doing this? You tell them, number one, because I love Jesus. But number two, I want to become such an aligned vessel that it will please His majesty to host His power, His wisdom, His grace. Are we together now? To pour me as a drink offering to serve the nations. As for me, let me say me first before I say my house. As for me, I've made up my mind that in this life, there is no settling for me. It doesn't matter where I get to. Ah, and I'm praying, may God help me to keep this decision. It doesn't, thank you for your applause. Thank you for clapping. Thank God for Sound of Revival. Thank God for all of the things that God is doing across the globe. Thank God for Koinonia Global. But as for me, and my purpose of teaching you tonight is to join me in this hunger campaign that no matter what level I get to, I will continue to fuel my staying power with vision, fuel my staying power with my passion for God, vibrant spiritual life, foil my staying power with mentorship learning from history when you hear about someone's trouble don't gossip about it and laugh allow that trouble be a lecturer quickly and teach you that if such a person were careless with his life and that was the consequence it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation we have to end let me pray for you father in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands over my precious people. I love them with all my heart. I have a responsibility for their spiritual growth, their development. They are attaining unto stature and they are manifesting as ambassadors. I decree and declare the grace that immunes people from being small, from aborting destiny, from not finishing even after a glorious start, I pray for you. May that grace rest upon you as a shield. May that grace rest upon you as a shield. May that grace rest upon you as a shield. I pray tonight that my God will give you the gift of hunger. Hunger for his presence. Hunger for the things of the spirit. Hunger to actualize your, your destiny and your goals in Christ. Hunger to evolve until you become a man of power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every distraction, tampering with your focus, I pray for you from the depth of my heart. May that destruction vanish like smoke before the wind. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you that every rebellion that is locked up in your heart, that it will not allow you the malleability to learn and become. Let that spirit of rebellion be cast out of your life now. In the name of Jesus, financially you will prosper until you attain unto the standard God has for you. Spiritually you will be vibrant until you become as strong as a nation. In the name of Jesus, in every aspect of your life, go forward. Go forward. In career, rise and be a giant. In your family, rise and be a giant. You are not the needy, you are a savior. 
I say it again, you are not the needy, you are a savior. You begin to manifest the dominion power of this kingdom. In the name of Jesus, may your life be a sign and a wonder. And I pray for you, for the remaining part of this year, finish strong. 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 In the name of Jesus. The dimensions of the anointing you have never seen in your life. May your hands begin to command it from today. Access to more superior dimensions of revelation. May God open your eyes to see. I impart upon you the spirit of faith. Go and do exploits for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus. And every grace that is needed in your destiny, but missing, required to help you finish this year well, I pray for you. May the Holy Spirit deposit it in your life right now. Hear me. For the last three weeks, I've been hearing this word restoration. When, when I, let me tell you the truth, in, in all honesty, the last three weeks, I've preached across a few places, but I've been using it to pray because when I hear, I first pray for myself and pray for everyone. And let me just use that as my last prayer. I don't know whether this means anything to anybody in this place. You have lost things, relationships, time, money, access, opportunities, levels in the spirit. I pray for you. Whatever is missing in your life by prophecy, I command restoration. <laughs> Hear me? Even Nebuchadnezzar was restored. He became an animal, but he became a king again. I pray for you. Whatever took you away from your throne, whatever took away your crown, took away your scepter, took away your honor, I cry, restore. 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 Restoration in your finances. Restoration in your zeal. Restoration of wisdom. Restoration of opportunities. In Jesus' name we pray. Wave your hands to Jesus. Give him praise. Give him praise for tonight. You will never be the same. Let this teaching shape your ideology. Plant in you a fire. Many of you, years to come, you will refer to this teaching. When you are alone, when you would have become so great, and there are not many voices around you again because of the height you would have attained you will draw from your archives teachings like this and you will hear my voice again even in your palace and it will speak to you challenging you to finish may the lord bless you in jesus name i pray you want to make it right with jesus tonight there is always room at the cross you came invited by god through whoever invited you or perhaps you came on your own and you said, let me just attend Koinonia today. Or perhaps you have been coming and honestly, whilst you heard me speak, the Spirit of God began to put it in your heart, especially when I spoke about spiritual vibrancy. Wherever you are, I want to give you an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. I count one to five, we're out of time. Very boldly, confidently, leave your seat and walk to the front. Your bags, your Bibles, everything you came to church with, Please make your way to the front. One, let's honor them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, my brother. Let's celebrate them. They are coming. God bless you. Come to Jesus. He's able to give you a new beginning. He's able to start afresh with you again. Come. Come. I count five and I begin the prayer. If you're coming, please double up quickly. Those who are in the overflows, you can make do with your LED screens. And then those connecting online, here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. Keep clapping. Let's encourage them. Four, God bless you. God bless you. This is for your destiny. This is for your children, born and unborn. This is for your family members. You're finally answering that call that turns you to a deliverer. It starts with Jesus. Always starts with Jesus. He is the cornerstone. Five, God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to say a very big thank you. Every time we make a call like this, it is because we know that God desires for all men to be saved 
and then to come onto the knowledge of the truth. May I request that you lift your right hand. That includes the overflows. That also includes someone who is following online who needs to make it right with Jesus. Do not allow this service come to an end without you responding to this nudging of the Spirit. Those of you in front and all who desire to make this call, this confession, say this loud and clear after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that I'm a child of God. From today, Jesus is my Lord, and I go forward ever, backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, I declare over these ones the grace to walk in victory as the righteousness of God in Christ excelling from one level of grace to another. Let that grace be released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. From my heart, I pray for you. You will experience what the Bible calls the joy of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. You will begin to move forward. Things will begin to work in your life. Your passion for Jesus will never go down. You will enjoy a rich fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Go from glory to glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please.